Gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Infantryman's Guide. In this episode, we're going to be looking at some of the more commonly used tools that are carried by grunts into the field to help plus up their position. Thanks for watching. All right, gentlemen, the first tool I'm going to talk about, and arguably the most important, is going to be your entrenching tool, aka the E tool for short. If you've taken anything out of the recent combat that's taken place in Ukraine, it's that the importance and how devastating artillery is on the modern day battlefield. Whether it's rocket or cannon artillery, it is absolutely devastating. If you want any chance in hell as an individual infantryman of surviving on the battlefield from indirect fire like that, you better have an entrenching tool. You better have an E-tool to be able to dig in, even if that's just to build a, a skirmisher or a shell scrape, you better have the ability to move that earth, to dig in, to have a chance at surviving something like that, okay? Um, I've got two different models here. What's not pictured here is the older World War II Korea Vietnam era E tool that looked very similar in design in terms of the shovel head. However, it had a longer wooden handle, um, which they're still you know great if you can use them and get them you know by all means. However, these foldable shovels fold up and you can put them on your gear and they take up less space. All right, so. This one first came into service towards the end of Vietnam. The, uh, the older original pouch was a canvas pouch. Later pouches would be this uh, harder plastic. But uh, this design right here, very plentiful, served all the way up into the G-Watt. And as you guys can see, it's a tri-fold shovel and uh, two configurations, either all the way out like this, or you can use it as a, uh, a pickaxe. And a, to lock it in place, you simply just rotate this dial here until it wouldn't move. And there you go. You can use this as a pickaxe, help break up that dirt, and then uh, once it's the dirt's broken up, simply loosen that, fold this out, tighten it back up, and there you go. Now it's in a, a shovel configuration. This was superseded by the later Gerber variant which looks very similar. Again, still a tri-fold shovel. Folds out in the same manner, except uh, you guys can see this uh, rotating knob here is towards the, uh, the back of the handle. But I can still rotate this and put it into a, uh, you know, a pickaxe configuration or a standard shovel configuration. I'm seeing these, uh, these Gerber shovels are quite pl plentiful now on the uh, civilian market as well. So you can pick these up. These typical come, typically come in a, uh, a canvas pouch like this and are uh, Molly compatible. So get the one you prefer. So these, these shovels, just because they're older, doesn't mean they're uh, no good. You guys can see they also have uh, serrated edges there on the, the left-hand side of the uh, shovel head. And to secure it, simply gonna undo this dial fold it back up and stick it back in its pouch and there you go you guys can see how uh, convenient and easy and uh, less space it takes up with the folding shovel on my gear it sits right there on my ruck all right next tool I'm gonna talk about are pruning shears now why would these come in handy well a lot of guys use these to uh, clip away some some of the vegetation not all some of the vegetation in places like patrol bases uh, LPOPs, listening posts, observation posts, and uh, it's just to help increase your field of view when you're in a uh, concealed area. All right, so that definitely uh, helps out with that. Uh, another very similar tool is just your folding saw. Now, these things are just fantastic. Uh, same same type of principle. If you need to cut away some vegetation, you can uh, use this saw to do the exact same thing. You can also cut branches. Uh, when you know I go up to a winter forge and we're, we need the pine boughs to help line the uh, the floor of our uh, bivouac site and our tents, and uh, also you know try to plus up our concealment. These folding saws had just been fantastic pieces of gear, and uh, they're very lightweight very concealable and uh, just have so many purposes that uh, it's almost an essential piece of gear for me now and I always take it to the field when I go. Also, of note, if you can get your hands on a, uh, a pop-up pouch, these things tend to be the perfect size to carry your folding saw. Our next tool is your uh, Matic pickaxe and uh, these come in a, a pouch that this is an older World War II Korea era pouch, has the uh, M1910 hangers. I'm sure there's other variants of this particular pouch out there if you guys want to pick one up. But 
Nonetheless, this is a, a very effective tool and uh, really helps when in, uh, trying to dig in. But you have the, uh, the head of it, and all you simply do is stick it in like so, and this will really help get and break up that dirt, guys. Um, obviously, your E-Tool, you have that. You can put it in a 90-degree angle, but I do recommend a guy or two within the platoon, maybe a squad, each has one of these. These are uh, very effective tools at really getting in there and breaking up that dirt. So uh, Matic is a, uh, a definitely an excellent piece of gear to have that can be carried on the uh, individual squad level. Now a hatchet, you know, the, with this folding saw, this can do a lot of the work that this uh, uh, hatchet can do. So my recommendation is, unless you have a specific task that you need a larger tool like this, you know, I would look at taking something like the, the folding saw over something like this, but maybe having, if you're moving in, you know, in a platoon, maybe having at least one or two guys in the platoon that have, uh, you know, a hatchet, a larger hatch, hatchet for bigger jobs. So it may come into handy at some point during your, uh, your mission. Obviously the mission dictates what, what tools you take to the fight. Uh, but it's something to look at. The last tools I'm gonna talk about are your machetes. And uh, this is kind of a supplement to that. This is a Gurkha style machete. As you guys can see, it just has a, a curved blade. I've used this for years, uh, multiple One Shepherd semesters. Uh, so it is, in my eyes, a tried and true device, okay? Um, and it came very handy for me through numerous training and also took it with me to Afghanistan. Didn't use it much over in Afghanistan, there just wasn't enough vegetation, but uh, it did, definitely went down range with me, okay? Uh, other options here are your standard machetes. Now I have two different sheath types. One of them is a, is a canvas, like you see here, just has a standard like belt loop. And then this is your hard machete, which has a M1910 style hanger. And uh, it also has a sharpener on it, okay? And uh, if you're still rucking a, uh, an Alice pack, you know, the Alice pack has those M1910 hangers on there for you to uh, utilize. But uh, your standard machete is good for heavily vegetated environments where the uh, the brush is very thick and you guys got to get through it, okay? You got to hack, hack your way through it, otherwise you're not getting through that vegetation, all right? So that's one uh, application for for a, uh, a machete. Also uh, clearing vegetation for fields of fire and uh, other things of that, that nature. Might be able to do it a lot quicker than you know your standard folding saw. Although your standard folding saw is, is a lot smaller, okay, but uh, maybe you need more time. Time is generally not on your side and you gotta get stuff done quickly. That's where you know a machete would come into play. So definitely uh, consider having a guy or two in a squad or a platoon outfitted with machetes so that those can be utilized in your uh, specific mission. All right, gentlemen, that completes my overview of some of the standard equipment that's utilized by infantrymen in the field to help enhance their positions. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel, subscribe. I've already done several infantry-related videos, and I plan to do several more in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment.